Coding. Made easy. So what's up everybody? This is Peter bringing you your next math and physics tutorial. I, you guys seemed excited for the first one. So I hope you guys are as excited for this tutorial. Um, we're going to be learning more about number systems and I know that kind of turns some of you guys off because you think it's basic. But to stay tuned, you might learn a thing or two. I have to assume that um, not everybody knows everything and that's why I have to start from the bare bone basics. But I... I'll promise you from tutorial four and on, um, it should uh, the pace should pick up fairly quickly. So um, let me write down. I'm going to write down the number a thousand. So uh, the way we we see number systems, we use the the default number system we use is the decimal uh, number system, which in turn is base ten. Now the reason why we use the term base 10 is that it consists of 10 different numbers from 0 to 9 and with a combination of those numbers from 0 to 9 we can make bigger and larger numbers. So that's why we, but we have the value base 10 because it is a combination of 10 numbers. But we don't ever put the, the number 10 there because it is assumed that when we see a number it is base 10. But how do we, how do we calculate the number um, how do how do we calculate the the number one thousand? How does it work? Well, um, you know what? Let me convert it to a different number. I don't really like that number. Let's let's put one thousand five hundred and seventeen. Let, let's just make it that random. But how do we get one thousand five hundred and seventeen? Well, you would just say it's just there. But but how does it work uh, more mathematically? Well, we already we know that this is the units column. We have the tens, we have the hundreds, and we have the thousands. And so how do, we can assume that the ones column is um, equivalent to 10 to the power of 0, which is 1. The tens column is equivalent to 10 to the power of 1. The hundreds column is equivalent to 10 to the power of 2. Sorry about that. And the thousands column is equivalent to 10 to the power of 3, and so on and so forth. 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10. 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 100. 10 to the power of 3 is equal to 1,000, and yada, yada, yada. That's why we come up with these columns. So how do we come up with the value 1,517? 1, well, if we take this, we have 10 to the power of 0. That is equal to 1. Now, if we take that value and multiply it by the number that we have in here, then uh, we can make stuff happen. So we're going to say 1 times 7. So that's obviously equal 7. So now let's say 10 to the power of 1. 10 to the power of 1 is equal to, is equal to 10. What's 10 times 1? That's equal to 10. So we have 7 and 10 right now. 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 100 times what value do we have in the hundreds column? 5. So what's the value? 500. And 10 to the power of 3 we have is 1,000. And what's 1,000 times 1 is equal to 1,000. Okay, so now we have all these numbers. What do these numbers mean? Well, let's try and add these numbers together. So we have 1,000 plus 500 plus 10 plus 7. If we add them all together, we get the value 1517. Now, that doesn't seem so um, convenient because we're converting a decimal to another decimal. But it becomes convenient when we're working with hexadecimals and octals and, and say, binaries. The reason why we use decimals is because it, it is the easiest to work with. Um, it's the easiest number to work with uh, by far, and that's why we use a decimal system. But if I, for example, um, I gave you this, what is that, what is that number? What does that represent? You might know how to calculate it, but what number does that represent? We don't know. The easiest number, we, we our brains are trained since we were young to learn the decimal system. And so when we see this, we see it's 1,517. And that number is significant to us. But this number right here, we're, we're probably going to say this is 1 million or 1 billion. I, 1 million something, whatever. That's what you probably think it is. But because if I put the base 2 there, what is the real value of it? What is the value of it in decimal? We don't know the true value of it unless we know how to convert it to decimal 
conversions. Now I'm going to be showing you something interesting, something interesting to programmers and I maybe to even non-programmers. So um, I'm going to have, I'm going to put a, um, a binary number right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So uh, this number is, is extremely um, significant. Now, uh, binary is base two because it contains two numbers, zero and one, and it is very essential to computer programming. Um, everything is done in binary. Uh, my talking is translated to binary somehow. The keyboard presses are converted to binary somehow. It is, uh, it is all just a bunch of on and off switches inside our computers. Luckily, we don't have to know exactly how it works. We just have to know that it runs in binary. Well, we don't even have to know that, but it is an interesting thing to learn. And so this is a base two. It's a bunch of ones and zeros. But how do we convert it to, say, decimal? Well, we, when we worked with decimal values, we took everything um, 10 to the power of so on and so forth. But um, we're working with base two. So instead, we have to use uh, two. So this is 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, yada, 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 and so on and so forth. Now, um, they can either be on or off. So either the value will be 2 to the power of whatever or it will be 0. And what I mean by that is this. Um, if I have 2 to the power of 0, that is equal to 1 times 1 is going to be equal to 1. So we don't even have to multiply it by it. If this number was set to zero, two to the power of zero is equal to one times zero is zero. So it's either the actual value or the zero. So now let's let's find out the 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 actual value of this in decimal. So we have eight different numbers, so we go from two to the power of seven all the way to two to the power of zero. So let's calculate this. So we have two to the power of seven plus two to the power of six. 2 to the power of 5, plus 2 to the power of 4, plus 2 to the power of 3, plus 2 to the 2, plus 2 to the 1, plus 2 to the 0. So if we, um, I believe this is 128. Let me, give me a second to clarify. So 2 to the power of 7. Yep, it is 128. So we have 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 and plus 1 and when we add the sum together we get the value 255 so this is a special number and you might be wondering how is it special it is a very special number 255 and because you've been using it you probably used it and didn't notice it. Whenever you open up Paint or um, even Photoshop or whatever, Paint.net, whenever you're choosing a color, you have a bunch of different color formats, but you also have the RGB color format, which tells you to put in a number between 0 and 255. Now, why do you think it says to do a number between 0 and 1 and 255? Well, basically, just to get a little in-depth here, uh, in binary, we work from the bit level, and in a general term, 8 bits equals a byte. Now, in some systems, maybe it doesn't work like that, but the general rule of thumb is that 8 bits equals 1 byte. And so, each of these numbers can be represented as a bit in memory, right? And so if you add these all together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we have 8 bits, meaning that it is 1 byte of memory. That's why the range goes from 0 to 255. So each color that you specify in the RGB color scale takes up 1 byte in memory. And that's how essentially it works. That's how they got the number, the range from 0 to 255. So I... Th Sorry, I thought that was interesting for you guys to know if you guys wanted to to know that. And I'm just about to end this tutorial, but if you ever want to convert any any number system to a decimal number system, you, you would do it the exact same way. So let's take the number FF for a, sec, uh, for a second. This is hexadecimal. And FF um, 
um, it goes, it ranges from 0 to 9, and then it needs to have, um, it has A, B, C, D, E, and F to represent the numbers 10 through 15. So hexadecimal is base 16, because it has 16 numbers, 0 to 15. So what we what we do? 2, 6 to the power of 0, 6 to, 16 to the power of 1. So what is that? We uh, 16 to the power of 1 is 16 times 15 is equal to 240. 16 to the power of 0 is equal to 1 times 15, which is equal to 15. What is 240 plus 15? 255. Now the reason why I chose these numbers is you're probably going to be seeing these two, these numbers like FF, or if you're programming you might see 0 uh, cross FF um, fairly a lot. And I just want to show you where these numbers come from. So anyways, I'm going to end this tutorial here. I hope I didn't confuse you too much, but in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking on how to convert, say, decimal numbers to binaries or, or to hexadecimal or to octal or to any other number system. And then starting from the fourth tutorial going on, we're going to pick up more of the pace, um, enough of just the origins of number systems, and we actually get into some real mathematical stuff that we can implement. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed, and bye for now.